What if your low mood isn't just emotional, but the signal that your sodium to potassium ratio is upside down? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today we're looking at how potassium intake tracks with depression and anxiety, why many people fall short, and what simple food choices can restore a healthier balance for steadier energy and resilience. I'm Alara Sky. This conversation centers on a consistent theme across large data sets. When you get more potassium from everyday foods, you're less likely to struggle with mood disorders. We'll walk through the evidence and then translate it into clear steps you can use right away. Across national surveys in South Korea and the United States involving more than 22,000 Korean adults and nearly 10,000 American adults, researchers examined seven minerals. Sodium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, iron, zinc, and calcium, and compared intake with depression risk. Adults with depression tended to consume fewer minerals overall, and potassium repeatedly stood out as the mineral most closely linked to a lower likelihood of depression. The overlap matters. In Korea, sodium, potassium, and phosphorus were associated with less depression, while in the U.S., potassium, zinc, and iron showed protective associations. Potassium was the one mineral tied to better mood in both nations, which points you toward a practical takeaway. Raising potassium-rich foods can support emotional stability. Diet context helps explain the differing sodium findings. Americans often get sodium from processed foods, while many Koreans consume sodium through whole food dishes like fermented vegetables, soups, and stews. Source matters. Minerals delivered in real foods behave differently than the same minerals packaged in ultra-processed meals. Mechanistically, potassium supports the electrical signaling that lets your brain regulate emotion. When intake is low, nerve excitability and neurotransmitter activity become less stable. Potassium channels act like gates in your brain cells. When intake falls short, those gates malfunction more often and depression risk rises. A separate study from Xinjiang, China, tested this from another angle by estimating daily intake through 24-hour urine collection, which captures about 77% of what you consume. In 546 adults who also completed standardized depression and anxiety questionnaires, those with the lowest potassium levels were nearly three times more likely to report depression than those with the highest levels. Anxiety tracked the same direction, with the middle intake group showing roughly double the odds of anxiety symptoms compared to the high intake group. The overlap between depression and anxiety was notable. About 10% to 11% of people with low or mid-level potassium had both, versus under 3% in the high potassium group. The association held even after accounting for blood pressure, diabetes, body mass index, smoking, alcohol use, and sleep quality. That strengthens the case that improving potassium intake itself can help you feel more balanced. Now, let's address the sodium to potassium ratio. Your physiology runs best when you eat about five times more potassium than sodium. The average American does the reverse, taking in nearly double the sodium instead. That mismatch isn't just about blood pressure. It correlates with memory decline, kidney stones, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and the mood struggles we've been discussing. The practical work starts on your plate. Build your day around potassium-rich whole foods. Bananas, sweet potatoes, leafy greens, spinach, beet greens, broccoli, Swiss chard, winter squash, tomatoes, oranges, cantaloupe, coconut water, carrots, kefir, and grass-fed yogurt are strong options. If restaurant and packaged foods are your default, each swap toward these choices nudges your ratio in the right direction. Choosing real food sources pays off because you're improving the mineral matrix, not just chasing a single nutrient. In the Korean and American data, the protective signal aligned with everyday dietary patterns rather than supplements. Think in terms of consistent servings. Add a leafy green side, use tomatoes and winter squash more often, and fold in kefir or grass-fed yogurt when you tolerate dairy. Salt choice is another lever. 
Refined white table salt contains only trace potassium, about 151 milligrams per kilogram. Natural salts, such as pink Himalayan salt, contain more than 2,000 milligrams of potassium per kilogram. You still need to moderate overall sodium, but choosing natural salt improves the supporting mineral profile compared to standard table salt. Gradual change is easier to sustain than a complete overhaul. Replace one processed meal or snack each day with a potassium-rich alternative. Swap chips for carrot sticks or cantaloupe, or trade a box side for a baked sweet potato. Over weeks, your taste for salty packaged food fades, your sodium load falls, and your potassium intake climbs. If you want a simple framework, start with five actions. First, load your plate with potassium-rich foods every day. Second, fix your sodium to potassium ratio by prioritizing fresh produce over boxed and bagged items. Third, choose real food sources of potassium, leafy greens, squash, tomatoes, oranges, bananas, coconut water, carrots, kefir, and grass-fed yogurt. Fourth, switch from processed table salt to natural salt to improve trace mineral balance. Fifth, keep the shift steady and consistent rather than extreme. Common questions come up quickly. How is potassium linked to mood? Large studies in Korea, the U.S., and China show that lower intake associates with higher depression and anxiety, while higher intake supports emotional stability. Why does the ratio matter? Your nervous system and brain signaling rely on potassium to stabilize activity. A high sodium, low potassium pattern works against that stability. Which foods help most? The most effective sources are whole foods, spinach, beet greens, broccoli, Swiss chard, winter squash, tomatoes, oranges, cantaloupe, bananas, coconut water, carrots, kefir, and grass-fed yogurt. How does processed salt differ from natural salt? Refined table salt is stripped of supporting minerals and is very low in potassium, while natural salts deliver higher potassium and additional trace minerals. Let's close with a clear, doable plan. Over the next seven days, replace one processed item per day with a potassium-rich whole food, switch your table salt to a natural salt, and add one extra serving of leafy greens or fruit to a meal you already eat. Pay attention to your energy, sleep quality, and stress resilience as you restore a healthier sodium to potassium balance. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.